Hello, Mark Fletcher here. I've spent many hours studying and watching videos about a subject that I can't find satisfactory information about and I'd like to discuss that here. The subject is that of setting up and effectively using aircraft trim in the flight simulation environment. Well, as you've probably already figured out, my flight simulator of choice is X-Plane, but I think the concepts that I'm discussing work for any of the modern simulators. The trouble I've always had about trim is that in a flight simulator, uh, very much like uh, radio control flying or I guess maybe even some fly-by-wire systems, you just don't get any physical feedback uh, from your control. So when you go to try to trim your aircraft, there isn't that real sensation of force or pressure against the stick so you never really know whether you're getting close or how close you are to being in trim and so that's really the source of of the problem and my struggles with trim the need to quickly and reliably trim your airplane really becomes acute when you start practicing IFR procedures because the workload increases dramatically and you can't afford to spend too much time getting trim settled. So here are my main struggles with trim. First, excessive use of autopilot. I used to turn on autopilot really as a crutch for the inability to adequately trim. ATC would uh, vector me to a certain heading at a certain altitude and I wasn't in trim and I would panic and I say okay I'll just turn on autopilot so that's one thing another is just spending too much time getting the plane trimmed you really ought to be able to trim an airplane in like 15 to 30 seconds and that way you can move on to do the other things that need to be done uh, that relate to to the flight and third this constant fighting to keep the plane from drifting off course or altitude. Uh, a goal certainly in IFR is to stay within five degrees of your heading and 50 feet of your altitude. And if you're porpoising and just struggling, you're going to spend all of your time trying to deal with that situation. All of this increases the workload that's needed for other tasks and just basically makes the overall experience just less enjoyable. Okay, so today I'm practicing some IFR procedures. And these exercise the six standard flight profiles that rely heavily on a precise and reliable trim system. And I'm climbing out toward 3,000 feet. I'm sure you already know this, but I put together this table for the Cessna 172 showing the six flight profiles and incidentally anytime you hear this phrase by the numbers they're referring to a table like this and so each of these six uh, profiles shows a trim setting and then a speed and a power setting for each one so you can imagine how important trim would be uh, in order to achieve these various profiles Here we are back in the airplane and I've just transitioned from climb out to 
cruise climb profile and I'll set my trim for cruise. Now cruise climb and cruise descend both use the same settings as cruise so I really don't need to make any further major changes to my trim settings. And as I come up on 3000 feet I'll back off on my power setting to 2300 RPM which is of course appropriate for cruise. And of course the plane will begin to porpoise as it tries to settle in. So I'm using a technique that I call pat the porpoise, which essentially is trying to cancel the cycles as the plane goes up. I just tap my joystick down and try to tap it down and cancel out uh, the upward movement. And then as the plane dives, I do the same in reverse at the porpoise. So as the cycles get smaller and smaller, then I might add a little bit of power, or drop a little power, add a click of trim. And as you can see, this patting the porpoise is only moderately successful. It's, it's still a struggle to get the plane to maintain its attitude. Another technique I like to use is adjusting my mixture so I can use it as sort of a fine adjustment throttle. Leaning the mixture will increase the RPM to a point and likewise reaching it will drop the RPMs. The trim system that's being used here is probably the most common uh, that most of us use and it's what I call button trim. And I have to confess that I'm really not all that good with this system of trim because I don't use it day in and day out. So you probably are a lot better at trimming your airplane with uh, this system than I am. Let's take a quick look at how X-Plane sets up button trim. You go to the keyboard section and we're going to type in trim and then you roll down here and you find pitch up trim which is assigned to close square bracket and then pitch down trim is open square bracket now when I first started out flight simming maybe you're like me I wanted to trim my airplane by so called by the book and the book says to set the desired power setting and hold the flight control while trimming the elevator until relieving pressure against the control. Well, so here is the problem. There is no pressure in a flight simulator. There's no sense of pressure. And that's what set me on a path for trying to find a better way to trim an airplane. And I soon uh, even abandoned button trim and turn my attention toward analog trim. Analog trim requires some hardware that I didn't have, so let's now take a look at how I've approached that. So here's the Pro Throttle by CH Products, and the Pro Throttle's got three axes. It's got uh, the Z axis, which is the throttle itself, and in addition to that it has this little mini joystick and the joystick moves in this direction which is X and it moves up and down which is Y. It also has a push button which is really hard to do but you push it and it clicks a button. Now for the life of me ever since I first got one of these things I could never figure out really what to do with this uh, mini stick. The, the Pro Throttle was designed originally uh, after the F-16's uh, uh, throttle. And in the old game Falcon 4, the radar was controlled by a, a little mini stick. And so uh, I guess they designed that uh, to sort of model that. But unless uh, you play a game that 
has some kind of a radar s screen that you move a cursor around on and you want it to return to center when you turn loose of it. I just really have not found uh, any use for it particularly. So what I decided to do was pull this module out that c contains these hats and take a look at what we're dealing with here and what we see is the mini stick is two pots. These are these uh, turquoise green deals here. There's one there and there's one right in there. They're soldered onto the board these three points right here. So if you pull that out I've got one here. Here's the two pots and here's the three connections. So this is the uh, X pot, this is the Y pot. So I'm thinking, well since I really don't care about the mini stick, let's use these two pots for trim pots. And, and I like an aileron trim and I like an elevator trim. So let's make one of these an elevator trim and we'll make the other one an aileron trim. So I found some real nice pots. These are 50k ohm pots with 280 degrees of, uh, of rotation. I can show you uh, in the description the part number and everything for this. These are really nice, clean, smooth pots. Perfect for trim. And the idea is to solder some wires on there and connect them up to the motherboard here in these three points. So we we'll solder them on right like that and then right like that completely replacing that pot and then I'll show you what I do next and then in order to get the button push notice on the side of this little module is a little button switch right here when you push this down it's got a little arm that sticks out there pushes that button like that and that button is exposed on the board right here these four points right there so you desolder those four points you desolder those three points those three points this module will pop right out and then I because I'm a scrounger and I have all kinds of buttons here's a button that I found and I managed to uh, cut this down and fit that in there so that I have me a button that replaces that stick so here's what the throttle looks like when you get everything done. Of course this is a left-handed version of I just showed you the, the other one was a right-handed version but in fact no, they're technically the same just opposite. You see my button that I've put in and that replaces the uh, the little mini stick and then what I did on the back side is I ran the three wires from that point back to here and then I glued one of those pots in the back here and of course I had to cut out this section of the throttle and then I put a, uh, a, a nice knob on there and then I put a little screw in there to kind of give me indication of where the pointer of this thing is and as you can see it's also got like a stop there too so that moves moves real smooth and real nice up and down so this effectively becomes my elevator trim. So you can see I use my little finger and I can move I can move that uh, pot real nice. And while I'm flying I can move that and trim my air, airplane in the elevator trim from there. Now the aileron trim was a little uglier. I just put a knob out on the end here but it works the same way. Ran wires, of course, from here back, and I can trim the aircraft for uh, uh, roll in the uh, in the roll trim. Now, one of the problems I had when I first built this was uh, the sensitivity of these pots was. Uh, enough that just the tiniest bit of movement was really uh, too much for uh, what I was trying to do in, in the game. 
And so I, I did a lot of experimenting with how to tone down these uh, pots. And uh, I tried going into X-Plane and working with those uh, uh, response curves and trying to adjust things so that you tone the pots down. And I just never really had very much luck with any of that. So I kind of started all over again and thought, well, let's use the control manager because the control manager is really the program that uh, is built around CH equipment in the first place. So what I did was, uh, uh, of course, I plug my uh, throttle in into the machine and then I bring up the control manager. And once that comes up, I click on uh, test calibrate. You see CH Pro throttle USB shows up there. I click on OK. So here's the screen really where all the magic takes place. Now, just to show you that everything is working properly, when I move the throttle, you can see right here that the Z axis, the little bubble, moves up and down. But notice it doesn't move completely from the top and the bottom. That's because it needs to be calibrated. Now, my little mini stick, my little XY stick, shows up right here, but since I no longer have a mini stick, the uh, my elevator trim, this, this knob back here now uh, replaces the X axis so you can see as I move my elevator trim you can see the little bubble moving back and forth in the X direction like that. I center it and then the Y direction is controlled by this knob on the outside which is what I'm calling my uh, aileron trim. So we'll center that up. And then the next thing we want to do is click on calibrate. Now it says hold the mini stick in its full left position and click the controller button. So in order to do that, I roll my elevator trim all the way up, which as you can see moves it to the left. So I'm, I'm, I'm obeying the instructions here. I click click and then it says hold the mini stick in its full right position so we're rolling in the opposite direction all the way click click hold the mini stick in its full up well let's before we do that let's put this back in the center because that's what the mini stick would do and now we want to go in the full up position so that's all the way forward in that direction as you can see click and it says full down, so we go full down, click, and then we center it. Like so. And then click. And then it says move the throttle handle to its full back position. So we go all the way back, click, all the way forward, click. Calibration is complete. Click on apply and then we can check it. It goes all the way down, it goes all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. And then as you can see my mini stick is centered so if I move this all the way up it goes full deflection. If I push that all the way down it goes full deflection. Put it back to the center. My little screw lines up real nicely with the back of the throttle the way I like it. And then we're going to test the Y, so we go this direction, we go all the way down, we go all the way up, and then we center it. So that takes care of calibrating the axes. Now let me just mention that when you get into X-Plane, you still want to do the X-Plane calibration. And we'll talk about that a little bit later when we actually get into the game. So we click on done, and then the next thing we want to do, well I shouldn't have closed that out actually. The next thing we want to do is go to Axis Settings, and we want to change the gain on the X axis and the Y axis. So they are both centered devices, so you click on center here, 
And basically what we're doing is we're trying to change the sensitivity around the zero point or the center of these axes so that you have uh, the least amount of sensitivity. And in order to do that, you click this down arrow. And as you can see, it changes the shape of the curve to flatten out around the center axis. And I go uh, full, let me put it back where it was. I go, I go all the way. I think that's how many that is. One, two, three, four, five. So five clicks is is maximum uh, uh, flatness of that curve. So that's that's the Y, or that's the X. I mean that's the elevator. So then we're going to do the same thing on Y. So we go four, uh, five clicks. One, two, three, four, five. So that flattens this axis here, which is what I'm going to use for aileron. Click on Apply. And uh, go back to Test Calibrate. And you can actually, uh, you can actually see this. I'm not sure you can see this or not, but there's a larger yellow circle, which is the actual movement of the pot. And then there's a smaller blue uh, circle, and it is the results of the exponential uh, input that I put in that graph. So as you can see, or hopefully you can see, the little blue circle moves much, much slower than the yellow circle does. So what I basically have done here is toned down that axis and of course same thing applies with the elevator axis as you can see that yellow circle is moving much faster than the little blue circle if you just pay attention to the blue circle you can see as I move the elevator trim it's not hard to imagine that I can get some really really fine control which is what I'm looking for. So we'll take a look at what effect this really has when we get up in an airplane. Okay, we're back again after installing our analog trim controls in our Pro Throttle. So we're here at 3,000 feet heading west and we'll pause it right here. So now we want to bring up our uh, settings And then we uh, go to joystick. Now this is where things get a little tricky. This is, seems like a bug to me, but all of my CH controllers are called ID0. But I just know that it's the second one right here. So when I click on that, you see my throttle is axis 2 and axis 0 and axis 1. This is my uh, elevator trim that I installed. This would be the mini stick X axis and this would be the mini stick Y axis. So this is my uh, uh, what I'm going to use for aileron trim. This is what I'm using for elevator trim. So I click in here and I go down and I find elevator trim so now I've set it to elevator trim axis one I want to be aileron trim and I don't want to do anything with these response curves I know from just experimenting that this does not help me now you may also need to, to reverse the axis I've I realized I had to do that one here but these are okay so then the next thing we need to do is calibrate and you get this screen here so we want to move the elevator trim back and forth until it takes it and then I center it do the similar thing with the aileron trim and center it and then my throttle 
back and forth with my throttle. Click on next. Next again. Leave the controls centered. Finish. So now we're done. Now that X-Plane knows about our trim controls, let's see if they move. Good. All right. Looks like we have success. So here's a summary of what we've done. Once I have the hardware changes made, the first thing that we would need to do is use the CH command manager to first calibrate the axes, and then next set the maximum exponential curves for those axes so that we tone down the sensitivity of them. Once that's done, inside X-Plane we bring up the settings screen and we map the elevator and aileron trims to the new axes and then we calibrate them. So it's not perfect I'm still getting a little bit of porpoising and things wander a little bit, but it really is much more manageable than using button trim. The science behind this is that button trim is digital. That means each time you press the trim button, the setting jumps to the next step. The analog trim, on the other hand, is a gradual, smooth uh, response. Sensitivity, as we've seen, is the biggest problem with analog trim. But of course, as I've demonstrated, there are ways of dealing with that. All right, well, let me wrap things up with some tips for using analog trim. First, you can pause the sim anytime and perform flight control calibration and configuration. And you can do that both at the system level such as uh, bringing up the CH command manager and you can obviously also do that uh, in X-Plane or whichever simulator you're using. And use autopilot as a double check of your flight control configuration. If you click on autopilot and your plane doesn't move around a whole lot and then you click it off and it stays fairly stable then that's a pretty good indication that your uh, calibration and your flight control configuration is pretty good. And then finally, treat your flight control configuration and calibration as part of your pre-flight checklist. While you're sitting on the uh, at the hangar and you're going through your checklist, you might bring up uh, CH Command Manager and make sure that your flight controls look good. You might do the same thing inside of X-Plane. You might even decide to recalibrate uh, some of your uh, joystick uh, axes at that point. Well, that wraps things up. As I've said, aircraft trim in a simulator is tricky business because there's no physical feedback from the controls. Use of analog trim definitely helps, but it's far from perfect. I hope this has been helpful. May flight simulation continue to get more real. Thanks for watching and see you next time.